33-year-old Kit Coleman has been supporting her two children with part-time jobs, teaching music and French. Now she lands a job as the editor of a brand new women's section at the Toronto Daily Mail. One of the first women in Canada hired to write at a major newspaper. In the late 1800s, it would have been groundbreaking for women to have been represented in the media in any way. I mean, it was the, the patriarchal pressure of the time was to merely report men's issues. And the idea that a woman was reporting issues would have been unheard of. Management at the Mail sees its women's section as a place for short articles about fashion and housekeeping. Kit Coleman has a radical new idea, and on behalf of women everywhere, will fight to defend it. In 1889, Daily Mail writer Kit Coleman wants to galvanize women through her column, The Woman's Kingdom. I think it is paying us women a poor compliment to imagine that we cannot take an interest in the highest and very deepest questions of the day. She writes on many topics, including the struggle for working women. Coleman visits shops and factories to research and document what women are facing. So it starts at around 6 a.m., still open fires. In 1891, women make up only 11% of Canada's workforce, and their opportunities are as limited as their rights. Many work long hours in factories under dangerous conditions, earning as little as 80 cents a day. For a woman in the late 1800s to take on, you know, the issue of, of women's labor and write about it in the media, that would take incredible courage and a drive to change society, to change the world. Coleman's writing raises awareness on Canadian women's working conditions. Are you paid on time? If women will and can do as good and true work as men, she ought to be paid equal wages. Her column also offers a female perspective on topics from which women have been largely excluded. Politics, business, art, and science. To see a reflection of oneself is very important because it does um, acknowledge that you exist, that you are in the world, that you are with voice. Coleman's vivid prose and quick intelligence win her a loyal following, female and male. But in 1895, the male merges with a more conservative Toronto Daily, the Empire. the new management insists that Kit limit her column to fashion and beauty. I think someone like Kit Coleman had to be astonishingly tough-minded. There must have been so many ways in which she was sneered at or undermined or steered towards writing the fluffy stuff. Coleman thinks her bosses are wrong and she asks her readers to prove it. Men editors largely think the women's page should be mainly clothes and chiffons. I want the honest, candid opinions of Canadian women. Do you enjoy fashion articles more than other kind of reading? I think there's a fight in most people that when somebody tells you you can't do something, it makes something happen inside, something brew inside that I'm gonna show you what's possible. My dear Kit, you fill me with horror when you speak of our woman's kingdom ever becoming a mere fashion column. Since you ask for the opinion of the girls about changing our women's kingdom, let me say no 
Decidedly no. Coleman is at the vanguard of a growing women's emancipation movement, one her conservative editors cannot reverse. There was an uprising of women who thought, we cannot go back and have absolutely no voice. We are here now and we need to be heard. Coleman keeps her column and becomes the world's first female war correspondent, Hello, kids. covering the Spanish-American War. You happy with this? I think it's my best one yet. I look forward to reading it. Good work. Thanks. She goes on to become the first nationally syndicated columnist and the first president of the Canadian Women's Press Club. She fought for a voice. She really made room for a lot of other women to also be journalists, to discuss things that they weren't supposed to. The media is the window to everyone's world. The stories that are told need to be told by different kinds of people. And Kit Coleman was the voice for women. She is what I think allowed many women to say, hey, my stories are being told. Here's someone I can relate to. She gets it. Coleman remains an important player as Canada enters a golden age of print. <laughs> 